Hello, hello. So last time you saw us, we were getting ready to leave the Louisa to go to the Solomon Islands. <laughs> which is the second part of our crossing from Australia. If you missed that video, I'll put the link here. Make sure you catch it. Before we get to this next part of the crossing, I just wanted to quickly catch up with you because I did receive a lot of DMs about this on Instagram. Uh, so yes, you didn't see me that much in the last episode and that is because I was fighting seasickness. So I just wanted to give you my few tips and tricks on how I manage it and what I do to make it better. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss another episode. First of all, uh, you need to understand what motion sickness is. So it's basically your inner ear that is sending a signal to your brain that kind of contradicts what you're feeling and what you are seeing. The first symptom is that you will be sleepy. This is the point where you need to do something because if you let it get worse and if you get to the point where you're throwing up the only way to make it better is to stop the boat which obviously if you're doing a crossing that's not going to be possible so there are a few things that i use but please if you have any other suggestions make sure to leave a comment and i'll be sure to try it the first thing uh, that is the most well known is that you need to get some fresh air and you need to keep your eyes on the horizon number two is something that you should absolutely not do and that is you cannot use screens and that includes binoculars so you can't can't really use your phone screens you can't read either and that is why I couldn't really film last time because using a camera was just a no-go for me another thing that does help me a bit when I start feeling seasick is that I go outside and I block my ears this way it cancels the signal that my inner ear is sending to my brain uh, you can also close your eyes while you do this that also helps and what you can do is focus on your breathing the real good trick is that you need to focus on something else anything that you can do to forget about seasickness will help you can also try changing your position so either lay down or stand up whatever you need to do but the idea is to try and lessen your head movement you need to find the place on the boat that moves the least and usually it's up and in the middle of the boat uh, so don't try to go to the sides and absolutely do not go down below and then if you're lucky what you can do is just sleep through it so just go to bed lay down and sleep and believe me it won't be hard because you will already be sleepy that's a really good trick if you can do it if not distract yourself so music conversation anything that's going to distract yourself that doesn't involve you reading or looking at something next is the diet within the first few days before the passage and during the passage you absolutely need to avoid spicy acidic and fatty foods anything that is difficult to digest that's a no uh, you also obviously need to avoid alcohol i don't feel like i need to say that but yeah getting drunk isn't a good idea something that really helped me although it's really hard to implement but you need to let go of the Coffee. so no coffee while you are sailing on the other end you need to really keep hydrating so drink a lot of water carbonated water helps and also stuff that helps are apple juice uh, chamomile tea and anything with ginger in it another trick on that subject you are like me and actually drinking during a passage is really difficult what I tend to do is freeze things uh, so that I can suck on ice instead so I freeze water I freeze apple juice and then I just have that during the passage you need to avoid uh, big heavy meals because that's not going to help you but you need to eat and that's something that is really difficult when you feel that way you really do not want to eat you always need to have something in your stomach so what i do is that i nibble through the entire day so little bits of something it needs to be light snacks that are easy to digest like crackers bread cereals banana apple i also haven't tried that yet but i feel like it could help i've been told that you need to chew gum because the constant movement of your jaw apparently helps then the next part is doing something for your senses the first one is smell that goes both way you need to avoid bad smells and you need to focus on good smells so I've got these sort of things which are sense diffusers and I try to keep them close to me during a passage and like smell them a lot um, the scents that have been proven to help are eucalyptus, uh, lavender, which is the one that I use, and also ginger. Then we've got the more medical uh, part of things. Uh, so the first one that I use are the C-band, which is acupressure. So it's bands that you put on your wrist, each of them. You really need to find the correct point. The problem with this is that if you're talking about a day or an afternoon sailing, that's perfect. But if you're talking more than that, at some point I feel like I can't 
can't take the pressure anymore and I have to take them off. The next one are the patch that you put uh, behind your ear and they last for three days. And the last one are the motion sickness tablets. They are really good and they really help but the downside is that they will make you sleepy. If there's more than just me and Jan on the boat I will take one. If not mm -mm, I need to focus and I need my brain so that's not an option. All right so that's basically it. That's all of the things that I use during a passage. Let's just go to the Solomon Islands. have left um, the Louisiana. I mean, we're still in the Louisiana, but we have left for the Solomon Island. I'm really bummed about this because TNG was an amazing country. The people are so nice. It's just like an experience that is very humbling because they have nothing and we have a lot. And just the fact that we can bring them just a bit is a lot for them. And I wish we could have done that for more people, but we have to get the boat first to a place where we can repair that head sail. We have no internet connection at the moment, so we only have the weather for the couple next days and we can't risk not having a window after that, so we have to go now, essentially. We'll still eat lobsters tonight, so that's good. <laughs> so yeah, let's see how the passage is going with, uh, with no head sail. So I'm about to finish my first night shift, which is never good news because it means that I have to wake up Jan and I don't like doing that. But otherwise it's going pretty good. There's some quite strong wind, which means that we're going a bit faster than anticipated, which is good. Um, and it's not very uncomfortable, there's not many waves, and it's small and being reached mostly. So uh, it's actually quite comfortable run so far. I'm not so sick, so yeah. <laughs> the only thing is that the autopilot is working quite hard because the boat is unbalanced because there's only one sail. Uh, when you look at a boat, there's like one sail in the middle and then one sail in the front. And that means it's balanced because the wind is applying as much pressure uh, everywhere on the boat. And at the moment, because there's no sail in the front, it means that the wind is only applying pressure uh, at the back where the main sail is and that's creating a, an imbalance where it's pushing too hard on the back and not hard enough on the front. The autopilot just has to work quite harder to make sure we get the balance back and to compensate for that. We'll see how much battery that drains tomorrow and, um, and hopefully tomorrow we'll still have a bit of wind because the production says that it might drop quite drastically. My ship guys, um, so this passage has been totally different than the first one. First of all, so I've got a new haircut and I need a cap to hide this mess. <laughs> but more seriously, the wind is coming a little bit from behind, so we have a, a broad reach and the waves also. So they are not banging on the boats all the time, which makes the passage very much more comfortable. This is Luisa to the Solomon Islands day two. Uh, we had a cool night, we were going pretty fast, a lot of progress, it was not too bumpy. But this morning the wind is blowing like crazy, up to 27, 28 knots, um, big waves. Um, but the angle is quite good, the waves are coming a little bit from behind us, so we are not hitting the boats too hard. Look at the sky, look at what's coming for us. Not pretty. Everyone loves the blue sky, right? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. It's not the best conditions. Quite big waves, lots of winds. There's the rain coming. Everything's good. Whew. We just got caught by a, a small storm, let's say. It was blowing up to 38 knots which is a lot, way more than we are used to. 
rainy a lot so quickly went downwind to reduce this, um, the wind and yeah we're out of it so I hope it's the one and the only one between us and the Solomon Island because I don't think I can take it anymore Whew. it was it was something guys all right now let's go to the Solomon sunny no wind no waves right that's what I say and the topic and the topic this is take it easy take it easy on channel 16 over Thank you. Um, yeah, that's good. That's for tonight and tomorrow, right? Yes, tonight and tomorrow, six o'clock. Thank you very much. This boat is only 200 meters. <laughs> Small one, and it's just like two miles away. So it's very close. It's fun because the sea is quite big and it's just next to us. Crazy. So we've learned our lesson. We're just waiting for this big bad boy to go through. So here we are with the engine on, just waiting. And once that big cloud is out of the way, we can start making progress again. Good news, guys. We are only 20 nautical miles away from the Solomon. <laughs> the bad news is uh, the wind has shifted and is now facing us. So we're gonna have to motor in the last 20 nautical miles. Um, yeah, that's okay. I'm so glad I can see the land. It's a very good feeling when you've been at sea for so long. Seeing the land is beautiful. Almost there, guys. Almost. Hi guys, that's it, we've made it. And one thing that I can tell you for sure is that it's hot like seriously hot but that's okay that's what we were looking for uh so yeah we just finished clearing costume immigration and all that sort of things and now we're just gonna go uh, in Gizo, just explore the city a little bit uh, but if you want to see more make sure that you join us for the next video where we'll uh, show you everything there is to see in the solomon islands